Hey, what's up guys? It's Troll from Teacher's Books and today I'm going to be recommending some cutesy contemporaries. I set aside a pile of a bunch of books that I really like that are contemporaries. I decided only to include ones on my list that were lighthearted and easy to read because I didn't want to include ones that were really sad because, I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't include books like The Fault in Our Stars or All the Bright Places. Even though they're amazing books, I decided that I should keep them kind of separate from these ones because these ones are a lot more lighthearted and easy and they're just easy to sit down and read and you can get another book done within about two days or less than that sometimes. I'll kind of arrange these between young adult and new adult because I do have some new adult books on here. Not a lot, but a few. So yeah, let's get started guys. First one's going to be the go-to book for contemporaries. If you're brand new to contemporary, this is where you should start. And that is the Anna and the French Kiss companion series by Stephanie Perkins. This is the first book in the series. It goes Anna, Lola, and Isla. Three books in the series. They all surround this boarding school in France, but they're all based off of different couples and different groups of people even though they all kind of come together in the last book. These books are really really easy to get into. The characters are great, funny, hilarious, and at the same time there's lots of plot development throughout the whole series connecting all the characters together. I think if I had to order them I would probably put like this, so Anna being my first favorite and Loa being my least favorite even though I still really really enjoyed it. I like Anna and St. Clair's and Isla and Josh's stories the best. The covers are gorgeous too. So happy they redid them because these are just like the prettiest books on my shelf. They're so so beautiful. The first book is about a girl named Anna who moves from the States to go to this boarding school in Paris and she meets this group of people and starts to fall in love with this boy named St. Clair but the thing is is he already has a girlfriend who has graduated already. Very dramatic. Her books are always really good and always really happy even though there is some sad part. Yeah I would definitely recommend starting out with these if you haven't read them yet and you want to try out some contemporary. The next author I'm going to list is also a very big contemporary writer. Most people have read her books if they enjoy contemporary or like contemporary and I recommend that you give her a try. I do find her books are not as addicting and fast-paced as the Stephanie Perkins books but I think that's more of just a preference. I think I just like Stephanie Perkins writing style better but these are still five out of five star reads definitely or at least four out of five stars. That is Fangirl and Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Rainbow Rowell likes to write very interesting books with very very shy characters. That's the characters that she normally focuses on. They're very shy, they're very laid back and a major part of both of the books that I've read by her is breaking out of that really insecure lacking self-confidence shell. Fangirl's about a girl named Kath who goes to university with her twin sister and last minute her twin sister decides she doesn't want a room with her so she gets stuck with a new roommate. She's basically a fangirl and she writes a huge fan fiction like it's massively popular about this Harry Potter type book series where she ships two of the characters together. So kind of like shipping Harry and Draco together. This is basically what her fan fiction is about and it's called Carry On. Rainbow has a book coming out that is just the fan fiction actually which is really interesting. The next book Eleanor and Park is about two misfits who kind of fall in love through music and at home situations that they have. This book's a bit of a more deeper meaning kind of read. A bit harder to read just because of the things that happen in the book but it was still really, really good and I love how cute and stuff the two of them are. Anyway, these books are really easy to read. Although they aren't as fast paced, in my opinion, as the Stephanie Perkins novels, they're still really, really good and I definitely recommend you give these a try. And the next book that I wanna recommend to you is The Duff by Cody Keplinger. This book was turned into a movie recently and I have not seen the movie, but people are saying that the movie was taken on like a Mean Girls of our time kind of thing, like a newer version of Mean Girls. The book is about a girl named Bianca and she's at a bar, like a teen bar with her friends and this boy approaches her and starts to talk to her. He's like the most attractive guy but also a player kind of thing from her school and she's like why are you talking to me and stuff and he goes oh because you're the duff and if you if I talk to the duff then maybe one of your hot friends will like get with me or whatever and she's like what's the duff and the duff stands for designated ugly fat friend even though she's not ugly she's still not the skinniest twig kind of person she makes some kind of poor decision and basically starts a uh, friends with benefits relationship between the two of them. I love how so many different things are happening during this book and it just makes it very very interesting. I definitely recommend you give this a shot. I read it in one sitting. I just sat there and I was like I have to read this. I have to like keep going. I have to figure out what happens and it was well worth it. I gave this book five out of five stars. And the next series is one of my favorite contemporary series of all time. This one is just so addicting and so cute and I just love it so much and that is To All the Boys I Loved Before duology by Jenny Han. This duology is about a girl named Lara Jean and basically she writes love letters to all the boys she's had crushes on and she addresses them but never sends them out and one day she goes to school and one of the guys she had 
a crush on comes up to her and starts referencing bits in her letter and she's like, oh my god, what's going on? She runs home and she finds out all the letters were sent out to all of her past crushes. Everything goes crazy from then on. It's just so amazing. I love it. It's so good and I love the family aspect in this book. Not many YA books have a real aspect of family and this one really, really touches it and I love that so much. The first book is To All the Boys I've Loved Before and the second book is P.S. I Still Love You. It's definitely very fast paced, both of these books, and you will just fly right through them and they're beautiful. So why not get them? Like you should get them just because they're beautiful. Come on people, you gotta get on this if you haven't read this yet. Try it, please, 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 please. And then we can talk about it in Fangirl together. And the next book slash author that I kind of want to touch on is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I have read her other book, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, but I didn't find it as intriguing and as fast paced as this one was. I really, really enjoy this one. When I'm reading it, I feel like I'm reading a movie. That's how well planned it is. Basically, this girl has been hiding behind her best friend and her best friend's really outgoing, but the other girl kind of like takes a ride with her, but like sits in the back seat, doesn't really do much. One day, this her best friend disappears and she sends a list to this shy girl saying, you have to do all of these things by the end of the summer. And so she thinks that, oh, maybe if I do all these things, then my friend will come back. And so it basically just starts from there and it's stuff, it's crazy. It's like kiss a stranger, go skinny dipping, steal something, break something. It was really fun to read. Love how this was kind of a mystery, but also a really fun way just to see this girl like break out of her shell, which is a lot of girls issues these days, like not being able to get out there and do what they really want in fear of people judging them or thinking badly of them or just making fun of them. So I think that if you want to read a Morgan Madison book, I would recommend this one over Amy Rogers' Epic Detour, just because this one's a lot faster paced and easier to get into, in my opinion at least. Why is my nose so itchy today? And the next book that I'm gonna recommend, I read in a day and it was so good. You just have to read it because it was so good. And that is My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. This book is about a girl who lives next door to a huge family and her mom always told her, don't talk to the Garretts because they will ruin your life because they just have a bunch of kids and no money to tend for these kids and everything. And then she kind of falls in love with one of the boys. One of the main reasons I really, really enjoyed this book was because you actually got to see them together throughout the majority of the book. You weren't waiting until the last page and you didn't even get to see them actually be a couple where like this one they got together within a decent amount of time and you got to see their relationship develop and then this big thing happens that kind of throws everything up in the air it's just really good and I really recommend you give this a try because it's really good and it's really funny and I love the family aspect once again in this book the cover is really pretty I, I find contemporary books are normally really pretty as long as they don't have a giant person face so basically no Sarah Dessen book. And the next book is still considered YA but I consider it more on the new adult side just because of the mature content in it and that is The Vincent Boys by Abby Glines. I just read this book about two or three days ago. It was really easy to connect with the characters and see where they were coming from. All of the characters, not just the main two. It's about a girl named Ashton. <laughs> Ashton. Look, it says I'm pointing. And she's dating this boy and she doesn't really feel like she can be herself with him. And then he goes away for the summer and she starts to rekindle her friendship and relationship with her boyfriend's cousin. I'm excited to read more books by her because they're just really easy to read but I definitely wouldn't pay full price for this. I got it off the book outlet. Yeah I definitely wouldn't pay full price for this book. I'd rather purchase something else but for the price that I paid for it was definitely worthwhile. And last but not least I have an author that is new adult and you've probably guessed her since I mention her all the time because she's so good and that is Colleen Hoover. -na 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 -na. This is a very, very addicting new adult writer. She's one of the biggest new adult writers. If you haven't read her and you want to get into new adults, start here because oh my god, it's so good. She has a whole bunch of books, but the ones I've read have been Ugly Love, which I don't own because I borrowed it from a friend. So Ugly Love, Confess, Maybe Someday, Slammed, and the sequel to Slam, which is Point of Retreat. If I had to rate them, I'd probably go Confess, then Ugly Love, then Maybe Someday, and then the Slam series. Not that Slam wasn't bad, it just didn't get me as emotional and attached to the characters as the other ones did. So Ugly Love is about a girl who moves in with her brother who's a pilot and next uh, across the hall is his brother's friend and he they end up starting like a friends with benefits relationship and he has like two rules that you can't ask about my past but and also uh, don't expect a future and you get dual point of view you get a point of view from Tate the main character and also from Miles this boy but it's like 10 years before and you get to see like what happened to make him act this way really interesting and they're making a movie out of it but I'm really scared that the movie is going to be portrayed as another Fifty Shades movie but it's not it just has mature content in it it is not like that it is 
way better than Fifty Shades. And I'm mean, so annoying that people are assuming that, but I guess that's just how life is sometimes. Baby Someday is about a girl who finds out her boyfriend has been cheating on her with her best friend, and so she has to, so she moves in with someone that she's met just over from listening to him play his music across the balcony, and they've been texting back and forth, and she finds out he's a musician. All of Colleen Hoover's books face are based off an art form, so this one's based off music. Ugly Love isn't really based off one. Confessed has art in it, so paintings. There's actually the pictures on the inside, so you could actually see them in full color, what they look like, which is really awesome because it really helps you picture it. And it's about a girl who lost her boyfriend when she was a teenager to cancer, and one time she's walking by this shop and she sees, like, this confession shop, and basically what you do is you submit your confessions, and if the painter likes the confession, he, dry, he uh, paints a picture relating to that confession, and all the confessions in this story were actually submitted by real people, which is really interesting because some of them are really intense and really sad, so to read them is just insane. It was really, really good. And the Slam series is about a girl whose dad dies and she moves to Detroit and she meets this boy next door and they immediately go out on a date and they really, really enjoy it and they start to uh, fall for each other and then something really insane happens and this huge road bump. They're all really good and this one's based off of poetry if you can't tell based on the name But I sincerely suggest you try Colleen Hoover because she's so easy to just fly through her books You sit down and all of a sudden you're 85 pages in and wondering what's gonna happen next like that Literally, I started pouring in for treat the other day just because I'm like Oh, I just want to see like how far it was from slam that she decided to jump and all of a sudden I look down at the page number like normally I check all the time like what page number I'm on if I'm not like engrossed in the book and I look down I'm on page 85 and it's felt like 20 minutes and I was like oh my god this book's so addicting and then I finished it the next day so you can tell that her books are very very easy to get into so that's it for my contemporary recommendations uh, actually, that's it for my cutesy contemporary recommendations. Maybe one day I'll do like a sadder side of contemporary if people are into that sort of stuff because they are very addicting. They're just not as happy, obviously. <laughs> if you read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. And also, if you have any recommendations for contemporaries, I'm always looking for new contemporaries just because I read them so fast compared to the fantasy books. So my fantasy to contemporary ratio is off and it should be equal more. So if you have any good contemporary recommendations, please put them down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Once again, you can follow me on my Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and my blog. I'll put the links down below. Thanks for watching and keep on reading, guys. Bye! I really like sitting here. I think it looks cool. And I got my five sauce posters in the background. See, they were performing in that one. I don't know how I'm going to lift this up without knocking my camera over. This will be interesting. Everybody's got their demons, even though we're dreaming. Da -da 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 -da.